Hi there. Do you remember those giant colorful contraptions that go through a really long process of knocking things over and setting off different overly complicated systems, all just to complete one simple task? Well, these types of machines were first developed by an American inventor born in the late 1800s named Rube Goldberg. In fact, these mechanical systems became so popular that the Merriam-Webster Dictionary actually classifies Rube Goldberg's name as an adjective, meaning accomplishing by complex means what seemingly could be done simply. It turns out students from all over the world have actually been competing to build the best useless machine every single year since 1988. And after watching some really interesting videos of these seemingly complex machines, I decided I wanted to accomplish by complex means what seemingly could be done simply by a complex machine myself. So that's what we're doing. Originally, I thought I'd just build a little desktop machine that would just kind of run continuously and set itself off every once in a while. Eventually, I realized it would be pretty cool to see something like this mounted on the wall so it wouldn't take up any more space on my already terribly messy desk, and so I could just look up at it every so often. Then I realized, wait a minute, it's a mechanical system that runs continuously, needs reset, and hangs on a wall. I could make this into the world's most over-engineered clock. So my general idea was to build a Rube Goldberg machine that tells time, hangs on the wall, and has more than four different mechanisms. And I want the overly complicated system to somehow flip to the next hour and then completely reset. Now I have to decide what I'm going to make this out of. I could choose the easy option and use 3D printing, but I decided to go with laser cutting because I wanted this to look as professional as possible and really feel like a finished product. So I'm going to use 300 by 400 millimeter sheets of 3 millimeter black acrylic. So keeping these dimensions in mind, I started to draw it out in Fusion 360. This took way too long. This is actually the most difficult thing I think I've ever designed. I had to make every part only 3 millimeters thick, so getting things to stick out in a 3D space and fit together was really a challenge. And every single system has to mechanically reset itself before the next hour. Nevertheless, I finished designing version 1, so we're ready to start burning some material. Now I probably should have done this before I based my entire design off of this material, but let's make sure I can cut and engrave the acrylic. Okay, that's a relief, it cuts great, and the engraving looks really clean. But I don't really like how boring this contrast is right now between the engraving and the glossy finish. So let's fix that. Here's a couple nice tips for lasering acrylic. To add more contrast to engravings, I find it's best just to leave the paper on the material, and then paint over the etched areas without having to worry about messing up the edges. Then after that sits for a bit, you can easily peel off the paper by using the underside of a scrap piece of paper, instead of trying to get under it with your fingers. Doing this makes it so much easier to get under that film and peel it off. Alright, now we've got a good contrast, so let's cut the whole thing out of cardboard. I prefer to use cardboard for my laser cutting prototypes, because sometimes acrylic can be a bit expensive. And I'm cutting all of these on Creality's new 40 watt laser cutter called the Falcon 2 Pro. This is really an incredible machine. It's got all the features you'd expect from a professional laser cutter, including a built-in alignment camera, automatic lighting, a sliding tray for waste, a super powerful exhaust fan, and a 400 by 415 customizable cutting bed. This Pro model also has some really handy safety features like flame detection, an e-stop button, and a security lock. I feel like this is expected from Creality, but the quality is absolutely fantastic and it was super easy to get up and running. If you'd like to step up your laser cutting game with the Falcon 2 Pro, I've linked it down in the description. So there's over 170 pieces to this thing, and it was quite a struggle to put it all together, but here is basically a less cool version of what the final thing is going to look like. Alright, I changed some tolerances and other small details, so now it's time to cut it out of acrylic. Okay, these pieces look really neat. Now I'll cut the 3 hours it took to assemble this thing into 12 seconds of editing, then I'll show you how it's going to work. So all the acrylic is now painted and assembled, so this is how all these different systems will work together to advance the hour. To start, a marble will rest here, then once the minute hand reaches the zero zero point, this pillar falls down and hits the ball, which will start rolling along a little slide that isn't here yet, and it'll keep rolling until it gets to this mechanism, which kicks over the dominoes, and the ball will roll back around behind the clock and into this opening, and wait to be carried back up by this central ball elevator. Then after the dominoes have been knocked down, the last one will hit this little lever, 
which will release a spring-loaded ratchet system, advancing the hour. So the ball will be reset with this elevator that's spinning around and then drop it off right here. And the dominoes will be reset with a string system that, when it's pulled, will reset all the dominoes back up to their starting positions. And this crank is going one revolution per hour. And that string is also pulling this lever, which resets the spring-loaded ratchet system before each hour. And then everything else, like the kicker and the ratchet stopper thing, is just reset by gravity. So that's how it's going to work. Hopefully that makes a little sense at least, but basically it's a clock that goes through a ton of unnecessarily complicated systems just to increment the hour. But of course, I still have some issues with details like a bit of overshoot in the hour indicator that I'll have to fix, but now we can really get a feel for how this is going to look and what it takes to build. And like I mentioned before, there's going to be a slide for the marble, so I've designed all these mounting points for the rails, but I still need to bend the aluminum wire into the correct shape. So I'll do that in part two, along with getting this domino system working by installing the string, wiring the motor, and hopefully get the whole thing moving together. So subscribe to get notified when part two is released. I can't wait to see this thing in action, but getting all these systems to work together is going to be quite a challenge. That's why I need your support to help me continue to make projects like this. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and support me on Patreon for more details about my projects. Thanks.